My name is Tony Sacco. I've been kiteboarding 10, 11 years. It's a lot of fun. I mean, I, I'm out here every day. If it's windy, this is where you'll find Tony Sacco. I travel, I mean, pretty much all over the world, you know, doing it. Um, and it's just, it's a rush. Yeah, it's definitely a rush. Typically, he sets up his kite on a local private beach. 99% of the people in the condominiums, they love it, you know. They like it, they ask us about it, you know, they want to take lessons, they want to try it. Of course, you always get one or two people that, you know, want to ruin the party. Sacco's party could get ruined this summer when Florida's new controversial beach access law goes into effect. There is fear and confusion among many people worried it will cut off their access to beaches all over the state. Where we're walking right now is probably public. Al Lasort is a real estate attorney. He says the new law is definitely a win for beachfront property owners, not the public. So people who like to surf and kiteboard and use the beach, I mean, they have a reason to be concerned. They do, particularly if their favorite place along the beach is in front of private property as opposed to a public beach. To better understand this new law, it's important to know the current law here in Florida. All the wet sand on a beach and out to the ocean is considered public. All the dry sand above the tide line is considered private if it's in front of a condo, a resort, or someone's home. And that is the case up and down the Florida coastline. Although it's owned by the private property owner, there's permission to use it by the public if it's been used for a long standing period of time. Effective July 1st, the local government will need to prove that there's been this long standing use at a public hearing and then in a lawsuit or else the private owner will be able to prevent the public from using all of the dry sand, the sand that stays dry all the time, in front of their property. Environmental groups like the Surf Rider Foundation fought against the law hard, but it was signed this spring by the governor, essentially making it harder for local governments to establish public access on private beaches. Hypothetically, this property owner here could build a fence from the end of their property all the way surrounding this dry sand area to the to the high tide line. Right, they would have control over this, exclusive control over this, such that they could keep people from using it. Now, whether that would involve a fence or a wall or an armed guard um, or warning signs and arresting people if they come on the property for trespass after warning, all those options would be open to them. There are hundreds of miles of coastline that will be impacted by this new law. There are, and around 60% of all the coastline is owned by private, private owners. About 40% is in government hands. Only time will tell what private property owners decide to do. Lasort cautions all it takes is one to build a barrier, and that would impact access, especially at high tide. You don't need 10 people in a row. People will, if this happens, people will need to plan their walks and do them at low tide. Otherwise, they're going to have to swim out and around anywhere there's a fence. If it's really good, I'll be out here all day, four to six hours. <laughs> yeah. Sacco is prepared for any rough waters ahead. We really have problems, but you know, you know, hopefully it doesn't come to that. Where you know, we just have to find a spot where we can kite. Of course, that was Tiffany Kelly. Now, this new law could also be a burden for local governments because suing beachfront property owners one after the other to get access to their private beach could get really costly. Yeah, and again, only time will tell just how this law will impact our beaches.